In this WrestleTalk news, is AEW's Fight Forever game secretly in serious trouble? Has Tessa Blanchard fallen out with yet another promotion? And Ollie is going to be here reviewing AEW Dynamite, so stick around, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! Support Andy Datsun! Yesterday, AEW gave us another close look at their upcoming wrestling video game, which was confirmed to be called AEW Fight Forever. And if you want all of the new details from that live stream, check out Pete's news episode from yesterday, where he dilutes it all into an easily digestible swill. It's up there. Click that eye up there. The game itself is said to have been in development for two years now, and with a full 2022 release date, the cracks are beginning to show. A report from Sports Gamers Online has said that there is trouble in paradise with the relationship between the AEW games division and tenured wrestling game developer Ukes. They claim that their sources have said that things between the companies and specifically with Kenny Omega are not in the best place at the moment. Reporting that Omega is hating working with Ukes, frustrations have been mounting and one source even said that it appears that Ukes were trying to take advantage of Omega's inexperience in a game development position. Now this is said to have caused multiple arguments over the game's direction and put constraints on development with features being cut or pared back. And the development Hell in a Cell has also left the game reportedly way over budget and it now requires extra investment. And that's the thing because AEW have already committed a significant sum to development of this game so going over budget is not a good thing. Now because of how the process has been, sources on both sides of the fence are viewing this as a one and done type deal even though Ukes were looking for a long term agreement for future game development at one point though AEW was said to not be ready to commit to that. With the relationship reportedly on shaky ground things look bleak for a Fight Forever Again type sequel, but one source did say that the partnership can be repaired, but it comes down to desire. If either side doesn't want to continue, then AEW will look for a new partner. Hop in the sense now to WWE, who could be putting on a second UK pay-per-view this year. WrestleVotes tweeted to say, WWE has discussed adding another stand and deliver event for one of the three big stadium shows happening this summer. I've heard the preference is UK for Clash at the Castle, but Nashville SummerSlam Slam seems to be more likely, all TBD still. Come on, Cardiff. Come on. And before we hop into the Dynamite review, a report from Fightful Select has suggested that embattled star Tessa Blanchard is in trouble with yet another promotion. Now, Blanchard has been working with WOW. She's a former champion in the promotion and has been training behind the scenes in kind of an image rehabilitation style thing. But the Fightful report states that there have been allegations of issues surrounding Blanchard and the company now. It's alleged that during a mid-April class, Blanchard cut a promo on Samantha Sage, aka Americana, that was said to tear apart Sage, which led to other trainees speaking up and acting classes getting cancelled from that point forward. It was also indicated that Blanchard was no longer a part of training WOW talent and others even suggested that she may be gone from the company entirely, though none of this has actually been confirmed by WoW. One source even implied that Tessa would have to work in Mexico if she wants to wrestle at all now, saying that if you're a fan of Tessa, you'd better learn Spanish. Ay caramba. Now at the minute this is all unverifiable due to many WoW workers having signed non-disclosure agreements and reportedly fearing backlash from the company, so we will have to wait and see how this one unfolds. Before we get on with the rest of the video, I'd just like to say a big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, which you can get 83% off and three months free if you go to surfshark.deals forward slash WrestleTalk and use the code WrestleTalk. Surfshark VPN lets you trick your device into thinking it's in another country, which opens up a whole new world of content libraries. If you're in the UK, you can watch US Netflix, which has a far bigger selection of movies. If you're outside the UK, you can watch the BBC iPlayer. And if you're in the US, you can finally get access back to the old WWE Network with its far superior functionality. I hate change. We've all been using Surfshark here at WrestleTalk for years now. It's our official VPN. And it doesn't just let us gain access to all the wrestling. It also secures our networks by encrypting internet traffic, keeping our location and download history private. My collection of ultra Swole Pokemon must be protected at all costs. And my favorite feature for this is that Surfshark knows when my phone leaves a trusted connection like my home or work internet, and it immediately turns on to prevent interference. It's 
like having a babyface wrestling faction for your phone. So sign up to Surfshark today by clicking our link in the video description below, surfshark.deals forward slash wrestle talk, where you'll get 83% off and three months free if you use the code wrestle talk. We'd really appreciate if you at least check them out as they're a great company and we love working with them. Support wrestle talk and support your internet privacy with Surfshark. It's Thursday, you know what that means. My review of AEW ROH Impact New Japan's Dynamite in about five minutes. Adam Cole, baby, joined commentary to open the show, leaving Tony Schiavone hanging. That's what you get, Tony, hands off his woman. Cole was hoping Bobby Fish would be the third member of the undisputed elite to qualify for the Owen Hart Cup against Jeff Hardy. And for a moment there, I thought they might, with a great avalanche falcon arrow into a knee bar sequence. But nothing, and I mean nothing, can withstand the full weight of Jeff Hardy landing on you with a swanton bomb. Jeff became the sixth man qualified for the Owen Hart tournament, setting up a long-teased clash with Darby Allen, who was watching on with Sting from the rafters, and who later cut one of the most low-energy promos in company history. There's not a lot to say about this, Jeff. The match kind of writes itself. It's gonna be a special night. Hey Darby, the emo stands for emotional. They played the excellent Scars We've Left On You promo William Regal cut on the Road 2 show before Blackpool Combat Club beat Andrade's random bunch of boys with Butcher and Blade tagging with Angelico, or Angelico as Regal called him, or Angelico, who's still with the promotion despite his tag partner Jack Evans finishing up with AEW last Sunday. The Combat Club are still my favorite thing in all of wrestling, but they're about two weeks overdue now for an actual storyline. It's Dynamite's compulsory backstage segment of Tony Storm, Ruby Soho, Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker standing in a row. Four of the top stars in the division relegated to the exact same interview for a month now. Jungle Boy challenged Ricky Starks for the FTW title next week, and then Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland called out Team Taz. This could be setting up a three-way feud for the tag titles at the pay-per-view, which is cool. I love everyone involved. But with the division also having far hotter acts like Daniel Nielsen and Moxley, The Bucks, Red Dragon, and FTR, it makes this feel like the tag mid-card. Wardlow is now just a lock ahead but away from going full Goldberg in his entrance. Never go full Goldberg. Where he came out for MJF's latest challenge against Seven Foot W. Morrissey from Impact Wrestling, who was in incredible shape and you can't teach that. Morrissey looked terrific here, as the two had a wickedly paced Hoss fight. Almost as a show of respect, Wardlow put Morrissey away with just one powerbomb. Psychology-wise, I think it would have been more effective to have Wardlow attempt the powerbomb a few times before in the match to build that finish. A we won Enzo, no we don't chant aside, the other best thing here was the post-match, where Wardlow obliterated an Avengers final act level of anonymous opponents, beating up all of security. MJF finally relented, agreeing to a match, but only on certain conditions, which he'll reveal in a contract signing segment at the most magical place in the world, Max Country, Long Island, next week. That is gonna be so much fun. Fresh off his feud with COVID last week, Hangman Page came down for his first promo since his world title defense against CM Punk was announced. He vowed there'll be no handshake, no masturbatory Bret Hart tribute match. He'll destroy Punk. Wow, that escalated first. He even picked on a fan wearing a punk shirt in the crowd, saying they'll want a refund after he's done with him. This wasn't a heel turn by a long shot, but that didn't stop it being heelish. The crowd booed as Paige ran down punk. This will be a very interesting dynamic to watch play out, and this was a hot, proper start to their feud. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Mad Mac the Meat Father and Ryan Disco Stewart. You too can get your own shout out by going to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. Chris Jericho is calling himself the wizard now. Sure, I did whatever. If it wasn't for Dante Martin versus Ray Phoenix later, this was my match of the night. Santana and Jericho wrestled as though this was a main event blood feud climax hot on the heels of the Inner Circle implosion. Ortiz tried to stop JAS interfering, but the numbers narrative was too strong again. Jericho low blowed Santana to get the win, and JAS beat them both up afterwards. The Gun Club got the acclaim some scissors as gifts for them all to do the hand gesture. This was very funny. And then the show started to fall apart. The Varsity Blondes promo fell flat calling out the House of Black, and when their antagonist showed up, 
The drama of will Julia Hart side with them or not? She didn't, by the way. Still failed to click either. There's long-term storytelling, and then there's stories that take a long time to tell. This is definitely in the latter and isn't working. Death Triangle ran down for the save, and everything ended kind of awkwardly. The final Owen Hart Cup qualifier of Phoenix vs. Martin, which actually ended up being a tag bout of them versus the concept of physics, was terrific. They got a fight forever chant and hit potentially one of the spots of the year when they landed standing with Ray's arm over Dante's shoulder off a top rope Spanish fly. That doesn't make much sense, but I am here for it. Phoenix won, hopefully meaning he can restart his singles momentum from last year through this tournament. Then the show got back to falling apart again, and I take absolutely no pleasure at all in saying it was all the women's division stuff. Recap of the story so far. In AEW's first ever press conference, they promised to have the best women's division in the world and to position them just as strong as the men's. That's their criteria for success, not mine. But that hasn't happened, and I and others have been very critical of the women's booking ever since. Fans have vocalised their disappointment in the actually quite oversimplified feedback of give the women more time, like that's the magic fix. As this episode proves, the issues run far deeper. Almost more than longer or more matches, AEW's women's division needs built up stories and characters. Because here, AEW gave the women time, closing the show with an AEW women's title promo and an ROH unification match. But the interaction between Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb wasn't good enough. With the one-dimensional motivation of making this the best women's division in the world, unfortunately now an almost totally hollow statement, and an awkward dynamic that would have probably been better pre-taped. And then the main event of this episode was a booking error so obvious, it's almost like Tony Khan did it on purpose to say, look, I gave you a women main event and you didn't like it, so nah nah, I was right all along. To close this episode of Dynamite, which comes with a very high bar of expectation, we got Mercedes Martinez versus Diana Perrazzo to unify the ROH Women's Championships. Both of them great wrestlers. ROH, a prestigious promotion. But Perazzo has not been seen in AEW ever, not having a single video package to tell fans who she is. Mercedes has only wrestled on AEW TV four times before this, only debuting in December, and the championship they were fighting over is another company's title that they were never known for anyway. As Rubik's Cube Plays perfectly summed it up on Reddit, that main event had the energy of doing Chavo versus Ezekiel Jackson for the WWECW World title on a main event of Raw. These two women were set up to fail, and it resulted in no reaction from the crowd beyond polite applause. The Performers have to take some responsibility too. How many times have we seen two unknowns come in and steal the show? Another factor here is that they simply didn't have a good enough match. Mercedes is the new ROH Women's Champion. What did you think of Dynamite? Let me know in the comments. The Wardlow MJF segment, as usual, was the best angle on the show, and Martin and Phoenix had a terrific match. But other than that, it felt like a bit of a phoned-in episode, and it then closed the show on two women's segments that fell flat. This week Week's Dynamite is the lowest of the year at 65%. You see, Randall, you might be good at running in real life. You might be good at sports, but Quop is not like real life. In Quop, you must move your thighs and your calves individually in order to make forward momentum. So let us see how you stack up against a master. Oh. Well, your turn. You see, Randall, as I proved, it is not as easy as it looks. Let's see how far backwards you go. No. No. No, this is illegal. It's an illegal knee scum. It's a... No. No. Go back, go backwards, Randall. Rand... Randall. 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 This is... This... No.
Well done, Randy, Andy Datsun. You've beaten Pete. Beaten Adam. You've beaten Luke. You've beaten Laurie. But now you've got to come for me. The big boss at the end of the road. I'll see you tomorrow, Randy. And the final one of the Randy Games. I've got a lightsaber. In this WrestleTalk news, the latest on the AEW video game, AEW's new TV show coming soon, Up Up Down Down returning, and more.